Today we're going to be talking about SEO or search engine optimization. Now this is one of the most important things you can do for your Shopify store and very little people actually talk about it. So first off, what is SEO? You can basically summarize SEO as how well your store communicates with Google and this is incredibly important. Good SEO can do three things for you. It can properly identify your products, which basically tells Google what your products and store actually are. It can increase traffic by increasing the probability of your product being searched naturally, as well as through ads. And thirdly, it can direct proper traffic. We get requests from store owners all the time who say they're getting a lot of traffic, but very few conversions. Oftentimes, this is because even though they're getting a lot of traffic to their site, they're not getting their intended audience. If you're not reaching your intended audience, well, people aren't going to buy your products. So how do we actually achieve good SEO? Well, there are five main things that we can do. Store and product meta descriptions, product descriptions, alt image text, store navigation structure, and by submitting your sitemap to Google. So first off, what are meta titles and meta descriptions? Well, you've been staring at these ever since you started using Google. Let's take an example here. So I've searched women's red fall coat. In Google, we have a bunch of different options here. Every main link is the meta title and everything underneath is the meta description. For your meta description, you have to worry about three things, keywords, length, and comprehension. Even though your title is going to be shorter, it should be to the point of what your product is. The description, however, gives you the chance to go in a little bit more in depth. Now, first off, you want to include those keywords. Keywords are what people enter into Google to actually find your product. In this case, we can see that all the associated keywords that Google has found, it is highlighted in bold for us. So we can see them all over the place here. The next thing is length. Google will automatically cut off your meta description after 157 characters. That being said, you want to try and keep your meta description within 100 characters. The reason for this is that Google puts higher emphasis on the first 100 characters that you enter into your meta description. After that, it puts less emphasis and eventually just cuts off. The third thing is context. Sometimes you'll get a store where you have a bunch of descriptions that is just filled purely with keywords and there's no actual understanding for the common person. This can drive customers away as they don't see it as trustworthy. So let's do an example here. If you were to try and find this coat in Google, what would you enter? Perhaps women fall coat red, women's coat fair trade, women red coat high fashion, as you might have noticed from my previous example, I've already searched women's red fall coat and I've actually found products that are relatively close to our product that we're trying to post for. So how do we actually accomplish this on our Shopify store? Well, let's take a look at our example product. I have simply just entered women's red fall coat and just a little bit of filler text just so that I can show you something. So, when you scroll to the bottom of any of your product pages, you'll actually see an example of what your product SEO would look like if people were to search for it on Google. So you can see that Shopify has automatically grabbed the description that I put in my product description and put that as my SEO. Shopify does this automatically so that you have a website SEO but I'd highly recommend that you go to, into each of your products and update your SEO individually to ensure it has the best possible odds of being searched by customers. So what you do is click on Edit Website SEO. This allows you to completely edit the page title as well as the meta description. You can see here that we're already 286 out of 320 characters. Notice that I said before, Google will only stand up to 157 characters, which is probably about there. You might also recall that I said that Google only puts emphasis on the first 100 characters. So let's take a look at a couple examples here of what this product description could be. Here's something we typically see on a lot of stores, especially for dropshippers. This is awful. 
even though it has a ton of great keywords in it, it makes no comprehensible sense to the average person and it's going to turn customers away. This meta description is the exact opposite. You see that even though it makes comprehensible sense to the average person, the only real keyword we have in there is coat. Nothing else is what people will be searching for if they were to look for this coat. In this example, we have a ton of keywords. Red, fall, women's, coat, warm, stylish, high style, fashion, and certified fair trade. These are all great keywords to have. You notice that it also makes sense to the average individual and it's just a little bit over our 100 characters. So let's see if we can tighten this up just a little bit. There we go. We've been able to shorten things up while still maintaining our keywords and our comprehension. Now that we've optimized this product's meta title and description, let's go on to the next point. The next thing we have to deal with is product description. This isn't as powerful as meta description of your SEO, however it is important. You have to ensure that your product description follows along the same lines as what your meta description has. It doesn't necessarily have to be word for word. Even though I've copied and pasted my meta description from the top, it can be different. However, this product description has to reflect the same sort of ideas that my meta description does. Google actually does a comparison here, and if there's a big difference between the two, it won't direct traffic towards you. One thing to note is that you're not limited to just updating the meta title and descriptions for your product, but you can also do it for your entire store. To do so, click on Online Store, Preferences, and then directly at the top, you'll see your homepage title, which is your meta title, as well as your homepage meta description, which is this here. Make sure 100% that you've done this for your store. This is one of the number one things to do. The next step that we can take is updating our image alt text. So first off, what is image alt text and what is it useful for? Well, if we go back to our red coats here, you'll see that not only do we have web links here, but we also have images that are tagged with those options for a red fall code. So let's click on images here. So you can see from these images that we found a lot of images of products that are close to ours. But you have to ask yourself, how does Google know that? Google doesn't know what an image is about unless you add alt text. For example, let's take a look at this image here we can actually see that the alt text for this product is here. You can see that this alt text includes a lot of different keywords in it and it doesn't necessarily have to make sense to the common individual because this is purely for Google. So how do we edit our images so that they might be searched when people are trying to search for our products? To do this we go into a product page, scroll down to the image whose alt text we'd like to edit and click on it. Click Add Alt Text, and then paste in whatever alt text that you'd like to have in there. I've currently just done our product description that we've had from before, but you can put whatever you'd like in there. Like I said, this doesn't need to make sense to the common person, it has to have those keywords in it. After you're done, simply close it, and you're good to go. The next thing we can do is improve our website navigation. Now most of this is done innately by Shopify, but there are a couple things that you can optimize. This includes things such as having your collections in the appropriate drop-down menu and perhaps nested drop-down menus below that. You can see that I've done that within my online store navigation so that things run smoothly. It gives Google a bit of context to know that these two categories are underneath gentlemen. Like I said, Shopify does a lot of the hard work for you. It has a lot of built-in SEO features, so there's not too, too much you can do with your store navigation in order to be able to improve your SEO. The last thing you can do is submit your sitemap to Google. First off, what is a sitemap? A sitemap basically is a map of your website and its navigation, as well as all the pages within it. 
there's a couple different benefits of submitting your sitemap to Google. One, it forces Google to index your site, putting it into its search results. Two, it forces Google to ignore pages that you've hidden. Finally, if you update things on your website, you can poke Google again to recrawl your site. So how do we go about doing this? The first thing you're going to do is go to Google Webmasters. To submit your sitemap to Google, you first have to confirm with Google that you're actually the owner of the site. Click on Search Console. Once you're logged in, you'll have one of two options, domain or URL prefix, in order to verify that you are actually the owner of this store. Typically, it's recommended that you click on URL prefix. What you're going to do next is paste your full shop URL. In this case, I'm going to grab our demo store here and paste it into the URL there. When I click continue, I'm going to click on HTML tag. Next, what I'm going to do is copy this line of code that Google's provided to me. Next, I'm going to go to my online store to my theme section. Under my current theme, I'm going to go to Actions and click on Edit Code. On the left-hand side, I'm going to click on Theme.Liquid. Underneath Head here, I'm going to make a new line and paste the code that Google's given to me. After I've done that, I click on Save. Once I've completed that, I simply click Verify. Once verified, I can go to my main homepage and paste in sitemap.xml. This is a sitemap that Shopify automatically creates for your store. You can then use that URL within the Google Search Console in order to be able to submit your sitemap to Google. So that's everything you need to know for Shopify SEO. I hope that helps and improves your conversions. Catch you next time. Looking to improve your store? Hire a geek! We offer individual store optimizations, one-on-one -on -one training, as well as workshops. Check out the description below for more information.